Ladies and gentlemen, you've been asking me for the short videos. Thanks to you joining United People's TV, becoming a member. You've helped me bring on a video editor and now we can get cracking with these short videos again. Hopefully get two a week out from now on. Drop a like on the video just for that. But this video is all about Manchester United squad. And I'm going to look at the starting player in each position and the strength and depth that we have there. Because one thing that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer really didn't do enough last season was rotate. That's why Bruno Fernandes burned out towards the end of the season. It's why Marcus Rashford burned out. What he needs to do this year is rotate his team. And we're back in the Champions League. We're obviously going to be competing in both domestic cup competitions and going for it in the Premier League. The expectations on United this year will be big after signing Varane and Sancho. But what and how good does United squad look in terms of the strength in depth? Drop a like on the video and make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. But let's get straight into this one. And of course, we're starting in goal. And for me, I think Manchester United's number one next year is going to be Dean Henderson. I think David De Gea is going to be the backup. And then you've got Tom Heaton as the third Goalkeeper. Lee Grant painting walls in Old Trafford, serving food in the canteen, grubbing floors. I don't know what he's going to be doing, but he's not going to be in goal for United really at any point this season. You can really argue whether it's going to be De Gea or Henderson. And maybe something will change between now and the end of the summer transfer window and De Gea won't be here. But for me, I don't think Henderson is going anywhere. Henderson didn't really feature for England during the Euros because he was injured. He left. He came back. He's worked on it. He's worked for his chances and he's worked himself into this position. And he wants that number one jersey. And I think he's got it. That's my own personal opinion. You might disagree on that. But in terms of strength and depth, if De Gea stays, we're spoiled there. Two top class goalkeepers. I don't think you can keep both happy. That's my own opinion. You might disagree with that. But in terms of the goalkeeping department, United look good. Even if De Gea was to leave, I think Heaton, he'll be a good backup. Coming back to United, he, he knows what it means to play for United. I'll be fine with that. And he's played well during the preseason too. Moving on to right back, we've got Aaron Wan-Bissaka clearly is the first choice right back. And if we get someone like Kieran Trippier in, he'll come in as a backup option to Wan-Bissaka. But as it stands, he's not at the club. And as it stands, Diogo Delot is still here. I question whether the Kieran Trippier deal is going to go through. And that's why I've got Delot down here. Otherwise, I'd have Trippier there. I've got Williams as a third choice. I think Williams is probably going to be priced out of a loan move to Southampton. That's what I'm really seeing everywhere. I think United want in the region of like three to four million as a loan fee for Williams. And I don't think Southampton want to pay it. Obviously, they need uh, uh, they need fullbacks after I think Bertrand left on a free and went to Leicester. But it strikes me as I think Williams will be here next year. And he's a good utility fullback in that sense. But he hasn't kicked on. I don't think he's good enough to start for Manchester United. And I would say that we're a little bit weak there. If we get an injury to Aaron Wambis, Saka, I'd be worried about Man United at right back next year, unless we get Kieran Trippier in, and I question whether that will happen. Now, where we've definitely got strength this year, absolutely, is at centre-back. And that's because we've sorted it out by signing Raphael Varane. Starting here at right centre-back, Raphael Varane right there. With Eric Bailly as the backup and, and Phil Jones at the bottom, and I'll explain that. Who? Oh! Raphael Varane, I still can't get my head around the fact that he's a Manchester United player. I really can't. It blows my mind. 28-year-old Raphael Varane, four Champions Leagues, a World Cup, three La Liga titles, 18 trophies he won at Real Madrid. And he's in his prime. And we've signed him, play alongside Harry Maguire at centre-back. Last year, we chopped and changed. We had Lindelof, we had Bay, we had Twanzebe, we had Maguire. Sometimes they played left, sometimes they played right. It was a big, it was loads of chopping and changing. And it didn't help Manchester United in terms of making a stable defence. So here we've got Varane and Bai. Bai there, when he's hot, he's hot. When he's cold, he's mad. He, but he is just mad. You know, I don't think we can ever truly rely on him as a starting centre-back because the last thing you want your centre-backs to be is hot and cold. They, you, you want them to be consistent every single game. That has always eluded Eric Bai, and for me, I think it always will. But I love watching him and I'll definitely keep him in the squad here. Well, he's on a new contract, so no one's going to buy him anyway. It costs way too much money. So that's the right centre-back and it leaves the left centre-back to have Harry Maguire and Victor Lindelof. And I think Lindelof would be an excellent backup to Maguire and Maguire has proved himself during Euro 2020 and for quite a lot of last season I would argue he's world class. Maguire is a top level defender. What he didn't have at United last year was a consistent partner and therefore his game changed. Every single week you're playing alongside Bay or Tuanzebe or, or Lindelof and, and it changed. You play alongside Lindelof a lot but they're Weaknesses were exacerbated by each other. I keep saying that. But Lindelof, I think, will be an excellent backup to Maguire. Maguire shouldn't be playing every single game next season. There may be a couple of cup games where he can be rested. You need to be resting certain players in certain situations to get the most out of them in the games you need them. And that's what Solskjaer has to do next year. It's why strength... Which you, you need two good players in every single position. And I think United have got it in the majority of the positions. 
We've definitely got some weaknesses still, though. Looking at left back, it's quite obvious who United have there. It's Luke Shaw and it's Alex Tellers. And I think United are good there. Injuries pending. Fingers crossed. Touch wood, touch wood, touch wood. Luke Shaw, again, like Harry Maguire, has proven himself to be world class. Absolutely the best left back at Euro 2020. Great goal in the final. It was not just about the goals and the assists. It's about his, his attacking game, his confidence has come on leaps and bounds in the last year. And he's shrugged off everything that's been thrown at him. All the stuff that Mourinho tried to make stick, it didn't stick. It only helped him become the player he is today. And United are lucky to have Luke Shaw. And Alex Tellez, whether or not you think is a good enough left back to play for United, I was very disappointed really with his first year at United, given that we signed someone who was at Porto, the age of him, Champions League established. I expected more of him, but I didn't expect Luke Shaw to do what he did last year. So, you know, I was surprised completely left back. But that's good options there. United have got Shaw and Tellers that we can switch in and out for cup and domestic games, maybe in the Champions League. I don't know, but there's depth there. And that whole back five there, apart from right back, which I'm a little bit concerned about, and maybe that's why we've got to sign Trippier, but I'd rather we sign a defensive midfielder before we sign a new right back to cover wan Saka. my own opinion. Again, you might disagree with that, but the back five looks pretty solid in terms of the strength and depth. Let's look at the midfield options. And unfortunately, this is where I would say it starts to get a little bit tricky because Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, as we've seen from all the reports, we haven't really seen it too much in preseason, but I'm not looking into that too much because we haven't had the right players. The formation. I think we will be switching to a 4-3-3 next year, which is why I'm going for it. So I'm looking at holding midfielder and I'm looking at the, the current options that we have in this squad. Now, the only true holding midfielder that we have is Nemanja Matic, but he's not first on my list here. I've got Scott McTominay at the top of the list with Matic behind him, Fred third, although you could probably put I don't know, James Garner there is fourth. United don't have a lot of strength in this position. It's why all of us, are, we keep banging the drum, man. We need a holding midfielder. That's the weakness in this squad. Matic is clearly the, the best out of those four, but Matic is too old. Matic is too static, and it doesn't suit this fluid, fast style of football that United are hoping to build with the signings that we've got and the players that we've already got in this squad. It's a juxtaposition, Matic's presence in that team. It just jars me. It goes against it. That's why I think out of those four, I put McTominay in first. I think he could be coached into being a better defensive midfielder. He's better, clearly, as a box-to-box -box midfielder, someone in, who plays more in the Bruno position. But we're going to be playing the double pivot at certain points this season, so you will see McTominay and Fred. It's just if we're playing a holding midfielder, I'd probably put McTominay there first. Of course, Garner, could he play there? Played there with... Not in Forest, of course he could. Fred, I don't think he can. So maybe I should probably put Garner ahead of Fred. But that's our strength in the holding midfield role. As you can see, there's not really much strength. It's a clear weakness in the squad. Because when you're going up to look at right central midfield, you've got Bruno there and you've got Fred as a backup. Bruno Fernandes, the best player in the Premier League last year. Bruno Fernandes, one of the best players in Europe last year. Add into that team the fact that we've got Sancho and then Sancho in front of him and Varane behind him. Bruno must be rubbing his hands together. And if we can get that missing piece of the puzzle, the centre mid, it could be even better. But Bruno clearly burned out towards the end of last season. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has a responsibility this year of making sure that does not happen. And therefore, we need to rotate. We need to switch. Now, I've got, if you look at this left central midfield options, I've got Pogba there at the moment. I've got Donny van der Beek in there. I put Hannibal Medjbury. Donny can clearly play in both positions. Hannibal can clearly play in both positions. And it kind of switch in between. I suppose you've got to throw Matter in there as well, who I don't really think will get too much game time next year. I think he's just going to be there. It's more of a, like a, I don't know, cheerleader. Bit harsh on Matter, but he won't play much. But he's certainly a good presence to have in there. You're going to be seeing probably Donny play on the right as a sub for Bruno on occasions. You, you might see Hannibal play that. I think both those central midfielders, in terms of the players I've got there in the left and the right, they can, they're can they interchangeable. They can both play in all of those positions, really, apart from Fred, who should really be playing on that right-hand side. There's strength and quality there. Even if Paul Pob believes, there's still strength and quality there, even if we don't bring in a new signing. And I don't think we will bring in a new signing in that position. If we do bring one in, it's going to be more of a holding role. Someone like Neves, someone like Camavinga. At least I hope so anyway. So what do you think about the strength there? Do you reckon that's good enough for United to have a title push? Do you think it's good enough for United to rotate Bruno in and out of games? And crucially, what we need with this squad next year is a, a squad of the quality that when you change your first 11 and you pull out three or four or five players that the style of football and the tempo doesn't change that much when you put the replacements in. That's what we didn't have last year. You took our starting 11 players out and then our asses fell out. You're watching United. It was like watching a completely different team. That shouldn't happen this year because we've got that strength in depth. And if we're looking at our attacking option, we are spoiled. We really are. Like Marcus Rashford, we're looking at left wing first. Marcus Rashford is the first choice, easily. Marcus Rashford is going to be missing until October. Rightly made the decision 
to have that shoulder surgery. So who are you going to put as your choice to play instead of Marcus Rashford? Because there are a lot of choices here. We've got, look, Martial, James, Ilanga, and I'm putting Shura Tiro in there as well. And I'm not sure how much, how many minutes he's going to get next year because we're, we're just littered with attacking talent. It's going to be a, a toss-up really between Dan James and Anthony Martial for me. Dan James, as he showed with Wales at Euro 2020, he's better position is left wing. He should be playing there. I think United have been playing him out of position the whole time right wing, if I'm being completely honest. And Anthony Martial, yeah, he had a terrible year last year. But Anthony Martial showed the year before, he's got real quality, huge quality. And this should be a massive opportunity for Anthony Martial to establish himself. Because in my opinion, his best position does not lie at centre forward. At centre forward, I've got Cavani and I've got Greenwood. Greenwood played a lot on the right wing last year, but we've got Jadon Sancho. So that changes that. And therefore, I want to see Greenwood playing through the middle because out of Marcus Rashford, Anthony Martial and Mason Greenwood, the best natural finisher is Mason Greenwood. When you when he's got the ball in front of goal, whether it's his left foot or his right foot, I trust him to finish it more than I trust Rashford and more than I trust Martial. So therefore, I want to see Greenwood really being, not the backup, but the, I don't know, the co-striker with Enerson Cavani. What a, what a role model to learn from. He was a fantastic last year, but Cavani hardly played in the first half of last season because he was injured. I don't think he'll be able to last the whole season. So again, this is about rotation. You might be seeing Martial playing up there quite a bit. You might see Elanga playing up there quite a bit. How brilliant has he been during the preseason? Elanga certainly has proven that he deserves an opportunity in this squad next year. I keep saying it, but success is when preparation meets opportunity. And he's taken it in the preseason. Absolutely. Gold against QPR, gold against Brentford. Looks like a monster. Just looks physically ready for the Premier League and mentally ready as well. Two cracking finishes. I think he'll get minutes next year, whether it's left wing, right wing or centre forward. And that's kind of the beauty of this system. Apart from Cavani, everybody else is pretty much interchangeable. Because on the right wing, I've got Sancho and I've got Ahmad as the backup. I cannot wait to see what Sancho does to this team. It's, it's, I still don't really believe he's a Manchester United player. Same with Rafael Varane. Until I actually see them both playing for the club, I won't really believe that they are United players. But Sancho has joined and Manchester United now have got an actual right winger. Now, there's a lot of talk about the fact that Sancho might play on the left. I don't think that should happen. Sancho should be on that right wing. That's where we need him the most. That's where Sancho can make the biggest difference to this team. We need that balance on the right wing. And then when Sancho's not there, you've got Ahmad. Ahmad, a young, raw, talented player, but we saw against AC Milan last year, we scored that little I think was it Bruno who dinked it into him. A gorgeous header. He's confident with the ball at his feet. He's a very different type of player. But as I've said before, again, all of these players, you could see Greenwood out on the right. You could see Elanga out on the right. You could see Shura Tire out on the right. Martial, Dan James. They're all interchangeable. And that's the beauty of the strength and depth that we've got in attack, apart from as a at striker. That's our, our weakness, I would say. An injury to Cavani that rules him out for a couple of... Touch wood, touch wood, touch wood. Doesn't happen. But if Cavani was to be injured for a few months, we, 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 we may struggle there because we're going to have a lot of young, talented players, but no one really who's there to lead by example. And you'd have to see Mason Greenwood massively step up. Again, like Elanga's taking his opportunity in preseason, maybe Greenwood would do that if he had the opportunity. I mean, Rashford wouldn't be where he is right now if Martial didn't get injured against Midtjylland. Because sometimes the way it works in football. But if we're looking at the strength in depth, that's, that, that's for me, there's plenty of players I've left out there. I'll run through them now. I've left out Grant, Twanzebe, Mengi, Lingard, Pereira, Pelistri. The reason I've left these players out is I think we're going to be seeing nothing of Lee Grant unless there's injuries, unless maybe De Gea does leave on a loan with an obligation to buy them. He'll come in as a third choice and Heaton will be promoted to second and the backup to Henderson. To Anzebe, I think, will get his loan spell. Mengi, I think, will get his loan spell. Palistri, I think, will get his loan spell. And I think United will sell Pereira and Lingard. I'm only putting players in this squad that I actually think will be here next year. Paul Pogba, there's huge question marks about that. I understand that. Williams, there's also question marks about that. There's question marks about a couple of players. But what do you think about that squad? Because it's important that we have this conversation. Because United's starting 11 now, holding midfielder aside, capable of winning that Premier League. Capable of challenging and winning that Premier League, in my own opinion. We're holding midfield short of it being a complete team. But there's so much quality from front to back there in that, in that team now. But is there enough quality in that squad for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to, I don't know, midweek, go to Porto away and then come back four days later and play Liverpool at Anfield and win both of those games and rest players and not have burnouts. That's the, that's a shift that we need to see from Solskjaer this year. The man management of this squad has to be better than last year or we're going to see come March, April time, Bruno dead on his feet. 
Rashford, he'll be all right because he's missing the first few months of the season. So that's been taken away from Solskjaer. But last year, too often, he played the same 11, didn't rotate enough. And I don't think, I think that's because he didn't trust his squad enough. We made good signings this year. Therefore, I think our, our backup, our squad strength has improved significantly. That's my own opinion, but you let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But look, ladies and gents, the short videos are back nice and concise. Big up to Tom, who's joined as the video editor. And I want to say a shout out, by the way. Thank you to every single one of you who sent in an application. There were so many applications and I'm looking forward to maybe bringing another one, another video ed editor in further down the line. This is only the start of it. You've helped me make this happen by becoming members over on Facebook and on YouTube. If you'd like to, there's a little join button down below. Hit that, get involved. It's like buying me a pint and the money's just getting reinvested back into the channel to make it bigger and better. And you can help make that happen. But what do you think about the strength of United squad next season? Is it capable of competing in the Champions League and the Premier League, which should be the ambition of United next year? Or do you think Solskjaer will struggle to rotate and rotate and keep quality in his team? You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Drop a like on the video and make sure you subscribe if you're new. Until next time though, take it easy.